Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm getting ready to scribe the combustion chamber. Uh, I don't fully port the chamber, but it had 194 valves in it, so on the intake area, I'm going to lay the blue stripe standard 350 gasket on it. The dial pins, the dial come and scribe the line on the chamber because this half of the combustion chamber right here is what needs the attention. The exhaust, not that it flows super well, but there's more of a problem on the Chevrolet head of getting it in than getting it out. By going to a 2-0 valve, it moves that valve. You can already see where the seat is right here, almost against the chamber. It puts that valve right up against it and just cuts the hell out of the airflow about in this area right here. So we want to go in there and from here to here open that up so that the air can get around it and breathe. I'll get a picture of a 194 and a 202 and just let you take a gander at this before we do it. But first let's go ahead and mark it in. Um, I just use regular uh, blue machinist die and so I'm only going to work in one area so I don't mark up the whole head. Just this business right here and this side where the intake is. See, I don't go real far. I just um, make sure that that 202 valve we're putting in there work because if you don't do this to it, you guys out there that are all hell bent on putting 202 valves in the head, if you don't do this one modification right here, then you've actually cut the airflow of the head down. I'm fixing to show you why in a minute. You can just visually look at it and see it. I've done a lot of flow beach testing on these heads many years ago and what I found was that by putting a 202 on them, if you don't uh, open up the combustion chambers and unshroud it, you'll actually lose airflow and lose power in the cylinder head. So that's a quick way to do it. So if the machine shop ain't going in there and unshrouding the combustion chamber for the bigger valve, you just handed them money to go slow. All right, I'm going to try it both ways. Here's the two valves. This is the 202 and this is the 194. I'm going to just slide them in to two points. Okay. Now right here, there's your comparison. You can see how close that 202 uh, gets to the chamber wall versus the 194. Well, that chamber's actually moved over a little bit. That's interesting. Oh, God, hold on. Hey, tried to find something that you could just visualize that everybody would have, and I found it. A quarter. I got two quarters. Okay. The reason that valve looked funny before it was a wrong valve, that was a 208 valve. All right, I had I thought it was a 202, but it wasn't. That is 194, that is 202. We got two quarters right here. And um, you know, I never measured the thickness of a quarter before. Hold on. I just measured it and uh, I, I measured both quarters and I come up with about 60 eight sixty seven thousandths and sixty nine so we'll split it we'll call it sixty eight point oh sixty eight notice how we take the quarter try to pull on in a little bit you take the quarter and a single quarter won't even fit between the chamber and the valve so it's going to be less than sixty seven thousandths look how much room when I take the quarter I got wiggle over here I can actually got wiggle room I'm going to put two of the quarters together and look here I can slide right through with no problem I've got a third quarter I could almost see it's barely catching that one up I'd say probably if I had a dime which I don't have one on me it probably slipped through see so look at our look at our difference. I mean that might not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about airflow and discharge coefficient, it's a major deal. All right, look at that. Won't even go in. Even one quarter at sixty six thousandths won't go through it. All right. So what we got to do is we got to get the two o two with the chamber at least close to what the one nine four is uh, in the chamber. The distance from the valve over here to the chamber from the 202 to the chamber which is unshrouding now 
you seen that difference that's awesome that's a good thing to so you know the kind of difference everybody knows what a quarter is so hold it let's slide the valves out and this is the correct way that you do it first thing we're going to do is take dowel pins to lock the gasket on we're going to put one in here and one in there or you can put them in the gasket sometimes in holes not that they're loose but they're not exactly crushed there's our blue stripe fell pro gasket turn it that side up that's how it would be on the block and then we slide the dowel pin in through the gasket and in the hole funny how one side's got a triangle in it and the other one's got a little circle the dowel pin goes to that's probably to tighten them up now look what we got right here. This is showing two things. Not only a chamber unshroud, but core shift in the head. This is awesome. Okay. With this gasket in place, never thought about it like this before. But when we put the dicom in and we do it, look at the amount of core shift in the casting of the head from combustion chamber to combustion chamber. We got a considerable amount right here. Uh, I could probably take the caliper. Let's see what we can do here. Alright. We take the caliper on the pointed end. Okay, as you can see, she zeroed out. And just, um... I'm coming up. Okay, it's, it's against the gasket. With it level in the chamber, I'm coming up with about 150 thousandths. Okay? When I come over here to this side, look at the, golly, look at the difference. It's barely 40, look at that. 30 thousandths is the distance from the chamber to the gasket. So it's a considerable amount of core shift in the head. Uh, now imagine if the chambers are core shifted that bad, what about the ports in the head? It falls back to what I said about the importance of the sonic map because you got to figure out which way it's shifted. Typically on a small block Chevrolet, it's always the end chamber is got more area exposed and the, and the center chamber uh, on this side which would be the number uh, eight and the number six the number eight is more unshrouded the six is shrouded and it's like that on pretty much all of them but some of them are way worse than others and this is that says a lot about combustion chamber volume the cc's from chamber to chamber not being close i've seen them as much as two cc's off well, anyway, they say give you a penny for your thoughts. How about a quarter for your uh, thoughts? I think that's a little better. There you go. All right, so we're going to scribe the line, and I'll show you how to do it, then pull the gasket off, and you're going to see the amazing difference in it. Okay, got our dock on. You always take your hand, even though you got the dowel pin, and put some pressure against the side It's going to be cut, and then you make several of these passes digging deep because you know once you take that gasket off that's it and uh you know of course the older you get the worse your eyes are i'm 52 so and I, I don't wear regular glasses these are reading glasses all right now i come in here and, and see it's just barely got material to even hold the scribe it's you know look at that Okay, I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. I got to do the other one. Okay, now this is where my scribe line is. Look at how much meat I got to cut out of this side. The line is right here on the edge, just fixing to fall off the chamber. Okay, look at that difference between these two end ones here. I'll go in here and dig up this one here. I barely got it, but touch and just blend it. And you can't go past the gasket ring. Now while we're at it, let's go over here and look at the other side, uh, the, the two toward the front. It's got considerably, not a lot, but at least you got a line and she got some meat overhang right here. I'd say maybe five to eight thousandths. And this right here isn't as bad. This chamber right here, 
uh, hasn't got near as much to cut, um, I can actually measure them and give you a number. Okay, I'm at zero. Looks like 75 thousandths on the thick side here. And right here, nine thousandths. Okay, nine thousandths on that right there, on that side. Now, interesting note, let's swing this around. I'll keep the film on there so it ain't cut off. Now, let's see what we got on this side. Exactly the number I come up with before. Right at 140,000, it's 139. So there's a big difference from this side being 139 to that side over there being what, 75? Now we go over here and it's just, it's zero. Right where the line is, it falls off. I can't even, I can't even get it to register, uh, look there, less than um, a, a thousandth or two. All right, so you see that. Now real quick, while I got the film on, we're gonna do one more swing over. I want you to see this, okay? This is going to blow your mind in comparison. I just wanted to show you this one. This combustion chamber on the other head, looky here. They're almost perfectly equal. I got... Seventy-seven thousandths right there on that one. And man, it's right there equal. It's got like a seventy-five thousandths, something like that. Oh, excuse me, 71. So look at this chamber. It's got the same amount on both sides. This was on, uh, that would be the equivalent of the two and four. Now let's scoot down here to this other chamber. Okay, back to the same old shit. All right, um, but this chamber probably isn't as bad is the first one. Okay, from the end to the line, I'm coming up with a hundred thousandths on this side, 100. And then over here, I got almost 60 thousandths at 58. So 58 and then a um, hundred. Yeah, 103. So anyway, this one didn't ship this bad. The point I'm trying to make is, if you don't go in there and sonic these things and see the core shift, see how they is, you go in here porting ahead, you're asking for trouble. It just pin, depends on that day, how much iron, how much it weighed when it was poured into the mold. Was the mold secured down better than the other days before? Uh, they've always heard the expression, this is a Monday and a Friday head. Friday being nobody gives a damn, wants to get out from work. Monday, everybody's hung over from the weekend, so everybody wants a Tuesday through Thursday head. I'm not saying this is an example, but this would be a perfect example of what they were absolutely referring to. All right, that's enough on that. Hey. Let's get back to the combustion chamber. I finished unshrouding them, cutting them away. <laughs> I went ahead and set this up. I think it's kind of cool. This is the 194 valve right here. This is the 202. We've seen pictures of before and after. Well, the goal was at least to get the 202 where it had the same distance as a 194 did in the stock chamber. We not only achieved it, we bettered it. These are two quarters, and I've got wiggle room. I tried to slide a dime in there, but I couldn't. But still, the point is, we got more room now since we unshrouded the chambers with a 202 than we did with a 194. But here's where it gets good. Look at the 194 valve. Those are three quarters. I got just a touch of wiggle room. So there's three quarters where the 194 is. Point taken is, Unshrouding the valve is everything. I actually have the percentages, but this right here 
absolutely means more than doing the bowl job in most applications. I mean a real bowl job because I know that around half of the restriction of the port is the valve getting the air to come up, go around, make a 90 degree turn, come out and go into the bore. I cannot emphasize enough about this chamber modification and what it means to the engine. If you ask me what trick per buck, if I had $100, okay, or say 150 and what porting modification would you want? I wouldn't even pick the ports. I'd say unshroud the combustion chamber to the gasket line so that it can let all of the air that's coming through the port, through the whole runner, empty and get in there. Because no matter how much you cut inside the port, if it can't do a good job of getting it around the valve and going into the bore, then it really don't matter. I'll try to get you a little closer up so you can see the difference. Right, there we are. As you can see, two quarters, look at that, slide right in without a problem. Look at what two quarters does here. So we take a third quarter there's our three. Put them together. Slides in. And I mean, it ain't a real tight fit. I, I got a little big of wiggle room. Not much. I couldn't fit a dime in it. So, anyway, just wanted to show you the difference in it. Now, before with the 202, you couldn't even put one quarter in it. It was that thin. But now we got that little room right there. And although that might not look like a lot, it means a whole bunch in terms of airflow. And I'm going to show you why now. This is all so important. This is just a basic ruler, but it'll serve the point. If you look right here, the actual point, I'm going to mark it so you can see it. You can see the little mark I put right here. This is what I'm trying to show you. The shortest point, but the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. This right here is where the runner wall divides and goes into the other port. If you take that ruler and you go across, look what happens. The shortest point ain't here. The shortest point is right here, unfortunately, right up against the chamber wall. Now if you could do a perfect line that would be it, but it's not. It's got to come off a degree or two. And it, you see, I mean the writing is just plain on the wall. That distance from the edge of that valve seat to this right here, this area here is so critical and then we got a chamber wall coming up right up against it. So the shortest point being that, that's the area where the the 150 thousandths lift, 100 lift, 150 up to 2. This is where it's concentrating before it goes all the way around and comes full circle to the high lift flow. Okay, just trying to show you something so that you understand how, uh, how important it is on the chamber unshrouding. And it's so important that with the big block Chevrolet head, it's canted valve. So instead of coming straight up and down like this does, Okay, the big block Chevrolet head comes away. They designed it so the cannon valve moves the valve. It goes away from the chamber wall instead of straight up and down because they know that moving it away from that chamber wall is going to bring a ton of flow in at one, two, three hundred lift. All right, just wanted to go over that. And that's off right now. We're getting ready to do the valve job and then final blending and resetting the bowl.